so our next speaker is one of our friends from UH. It's Russell Galante, and Russell is a junior extension agent for ornamental crops and landscape industries based on Oahu. He did receive his master's degree from CTAR. Um, he's worked with the green industry for 17 years. Um, in his current position, he's working on a number of projects related to pests and diseases in the green industry, new temperate cut flower trials, lowland protea variety trials, new tree variety releases, as well as working on new marketing opportunities for nursery growers on Oahu. So welcome, Russell. Thanks for having me up here. So I started about six months ago in April, um, and immediately I moved over from Komohana uh, here in Hilo to Honolulu, and the first thing they said was, we've got this ginger problem, uh, this red flowering ginger problem that you need to start work on uh, immediately. We've got a grant for it, and uh, it's the most pressing issue uh, for Oahu's uh, floriculture and nursery industry, and so I made sure to incorporate and envelop uh, the landscape industry into this problem as well, because um, this disease issue is, is island-wide. The first issue is that we've got uh, virus infections in flowering gingers in Hawaii, and who I'm working with on this project, on this portion of the project, is mainly John Hu, and then all of his laboratory technicians, as well as Mike Melsner and Jerry Sugano, uh, extension agent on Oahu, who took on the grant originally. So what was happening about five years ago before I was involved, um, growers started to report that they were having quick decline in ginger in the Kahului region of Oahu, which is where that red circle is. So it's an incredibly rainy area, and it also was an epicenter of red flower ginger production at the time. And so that was in about 2014 when these individuals started reporting that there was decline in red flower red flower ginger production, ginger production due to, due to uh, fast decline fast symptoms, symptoms related to uh, just, uh, just leaf dieback, stalk dieback, and lower production. So do we have cut flower ginger producers in the audience today? Yeah, and you're doing red ginger? Okay, great. And hopefully there might be some people online. Yeah. Uh, so the problem is since spread island-wide. Uh, we've had reports through most of the ginger growers throughout the island, as well as doing surveys on Oahu. It's within the landscapes in the uh, resort areas, as well as residential areas. <laughs> it's good to hear my own voice. I just got told Sorry, I have a nice radio voice. voice, so you know I'm feeling really good about myself. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Uh, so the symptoms that we're looking at are going to be modeling, streaking of the leaves in terms of virus. So I'm first talking about the virus, and all of this work I'm presenting on behalf of John Hu, uh, Dr. John Hu, who is a virologist at UH Manila. So he's doing all of the virology work. There's a lot of people working on this problem who I'm gonna also discuss later. But first of all, we're talking about John Hu's work. So there's multiple symptoms, either modeling, mosaic patterns, or a combination of the two. And it's all the way uh, down to looking like just chlorotic growth. So a lot of the growers at first thought they just had nutritional deficiencies. There's also, reports of symptoms on flowers. So speckling, scratching, and streaking on flowers is related to some of these disease symptoms. So in why uh, two viruses were originally determined for uh, infecting red flowering ginger, and they were banana brack mosaic virus and canna yellow model virus. And these are both viruses that were jumping off of other plants, banana and Canna. So for banana bract mosaic virus, which is going to be the BBRMV uh, in the future slides, you're seeing the symptoms of the uh, mosaic patterns as well as modeling on the flowers. And for canna yellow mosaic virus, we're seeing slightly less 
uh, modeling symptoms and they are exhibiting more of that chlorotic growth. So what growers were thinking was either nitrogen deficiencies or something along those lines. Now these two were identified as being uh, viruses that were infecting gingers, but they weren't necessarily causing the symptoms that were alarming growers for the industry, which was stunting. So banana brack mosaic virus is a podivirus, and canna yellow mosaic virus is a badnavirus. We do know the, the vector for the BBRMB, and that is uh, it's, uh, an aphid, pentalonia. And for the canna yellow mosaic virus, we don't necessarily know what the vector is uh, in Y. Now for other badnaviruses, it's generally mealybugs and sometimes aphids. Uh, but we have not seen an actual insect vector or been able to determine the vector for CFIMB. And so here's just what the viruses look like as well as uh, what their vectors would look like. So aphids for BBRMB and the assumed mealybugs for CFIMB. So where we really start to see issues is with co-infections. So we started to find um, multiple viruses within one plant. Now the decline symptoms and the stunting were not related to either of these viruses infecting the plant individually, but when you saw co-infections of BBRMB and CAYMB, you started to see some stronger symptoms of, of stunting, of reduced yields, and of plant decline. So if it What's complicated now, it gets worse because we started to find new viruses. And one of them was bean comic mosaic virus. So this is the first time in, in or the first report in the world of bean comic mosaic, bean common mosaic virus infecting gingers. So we were able to report that. This was uh, the only time somebody had seen BCMV and reported on it in, in ginger plants. And in this case, it was actually a co-infection of can yellow mono virus, mosaic virus, and uh, BCMB being common, common mosaic virus. And then, of course, to make things worse, uh, another virus was identified, and that was banana streak virus. And so the only symptoms we've seen from banana streak virus were this, uh, was this streaking and the scratching of, of flower petals on ginger plants. We actually haven't found that many plants that have been infected by BCMV or BSV. So far, most of the infections have been candy yellow mosaic and the banana brown virus. So the conclusions for the, the viral infections were that there's currently four viruses that are infecting gingers as we know it. Um, these are pretty common viruses. Uh, in Hawaii, so they've been noted on other islands. So in terms of quarantine, that might be something to consider if you were thinking about quarantining um, Oahu plants. It's most likely that these plants are already, or these viruses are already on other islands. The big issue is that, that what Lisa described of that plant environment host interaction, or the, the pathogen environment host interaction. They're not getting all three. So beyond viral symptoms, the problem is there's the virus and other pathogens. So there's stunting and weakening of plants, but beyond viruses, there's another pathogen actually causing the quick decline symptoms. And that pathogen is unknown. So when this originally came out, uh, the Department of Ag had sampled some of these plants and they found a number of fungal pathogens as well as an unknown bacterial pathogen. And so the assumption was it was going to be a bacterial or a fungal pathogen that was giving these plants that double knockout punch. They would get sick with the viruses and then they would get killed uh, or knocked back severely to a point of being beyond a threshold of production that was useful for growers. So the symptoms of these diebacks was, like I was saying, stunting and dieback. Uh, first of leaves and then of stems. Plant height usually decreases up to six feet. So you're, you're, you're used to seeing red flowering ginger at like 10 feet. 
something like that. Uh, instead, most of the fields uh, that we're dealing with are below our knees or below our waist. So these growers' plants have, have reduced in size significantly, as well as uh, flowers being reduced. So instead of six to 12 inch flowers, they're having very small uh, flowers between about three inches, very thin. It looks like flowers that are produced in California. That was a jab in California. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, and the streaking and scratching symptoms, but that's viral related. Uh, so in terms of the initial symptoms, you'll start seeing yellowing of the leaves, especially with leaves that are, are recently uh, unfolded, as well as uh, tip dieback. And so it starts to look like a um, uh, uh, root rot issue. And there's actually also root dieback that's uh, occurring, but this is just above ground symptoms, yellowing, uh, curling of the leaves, and then eventual whole stem dieback. And something we've noticed on all the plants is the dieback of roots, as well as uh, fungal, actual symptoms of fungal pathogens on the plants. Now, whether or not these are secondary infectors or the, the, the pathogen that we're looking for, we're not 100% sure of. Where we're at now is that we had done sampling on Oahu. Samples were given to the bacteriology lab. Let's see if that's my next slide, okay. So samples were given to uh, Dr. Arif's lab, Muhammad Arif, uh, at UH Manoa campus. They tested for bacteria, and they were also given to the laboratory of Dr. Janice Uchida. So unfortunately for us in this project, uh, uh, Dr. Ichida had just retired. She retired a couple months ago. Luckily, her brother and lab tech, Chris Kadoka, is staying on until December and he's helping me with any of the fungal work that we're doing. But we're gonna be in need of a mycologist come December or January. So, you know, if there's any USDA folks that wanna help me out, <laughs> I'd appreciate it. Anyways, uh, Dr. Hu also got the samples and he was testing everything uh, for the viruses and potentially additional viruses. Now, the samples that we got back, the results that we got back from Dr. Reef was there were no uh, known bacterial infections that were on them. So we're thinking that it's not bacterial. And we found a number of, of fungal pathogens on the samples that we submitted and I was working on uh, Dr. Ishida with. So the current understanding is that we've got several viruses. We know that. Uh, viruses reduce the vigor of the plants. Uh, Dr. Hu likes to relate it to something like HIV, uh, where it's making the patient, the plant sick, and then that plant is more susceptible. It's like an autoimmune disorder to other plants, to other pathogens. No bacterial pathogens were present. Fungal pathogens were identified. Common pathogens that were identified were Phomopsis, Foma, Fusarium bipolaris, and several others that uh, we don't have ID yet. So there was no Merasmius in any of the samples, so we're thinking that Merasmius is not the fungal pathogen that's causing the quick dieback, which it would have been, I think, a little bit more simple if it was actually Merasmius, but we have to figure out which of these guys is the issue if they're the issue, and whether or not they're an issue with or without the viruses, and which viruses are uh, the most damaging when you add the fungal pathogens. So right now we're at the point where we had, using Robert Kading, surveyed some of Hawaii Island, so I'm not sure if Shane, if Robert had worked with you at all, getting samples from you or looking for symptoms. Um, so he was surveying folks on Big Island, asking if they had seen symptoms like this, and checking plants for uh, pathogens and virus. We were able to determine a few plants that we are assumed are clean, and Robert ended up, before leaving, giving me those plants. So I flew, them, I flew over, picked up the plants, brought them back to Manoa. So we have hopefully clean ginger stock that we are going to do pathog pathogenicity testing on. Now, when we do that, John Hu is also going to test these plants for virus. So we're at the point where November 6th, I'm going to work with Chris and do pathogenicity testing with those fungi that we have uh, incubating. And then we're trying to identify best management practices for controlling the virus vectors, as well as uh, Assuming it's a fungicide, we are going to do fungicide trials for the fungal pathogens. 
So before understanding the problem as a whole, we're still trying to look at uh, educating growers on uh, proposed management, assuming that we've got the virus and we've got fungal pathogens. So we're using the general idea of using integrated pest management uh, to manage these disease symptoms. And of course, for the virus, you have to work on prevention, making sure that you're preventing uh, the vectors from entering your system with the virus itself. And of course, cultural, physical, uh, on up to chemical. So for you folks on Big Island, the big thing is making sure you don't get the virus in your fields. So uh, not bringing plants back from Oahu, not bringing in unknown or possibly dirty uh, ginger plants, and making sure that you are keeping uh, yourselves clean, your equipment clean, and your vehicles clean if you're visiting other farms. Now, some of the viruses can be spread mechanically very easily, some of them can't, and fungal pathogens can be spread uh, me mechanically easily, so they don't require a vector. So you want to make sure that, that you're clean as well. I think this is an interesting picture. So this is at Lion Arboretum. I was running around trying to find pictures of, of other cultivars of gingers to recommend to the landscape industry and to possibly cut flower growers. So this ginger in front has virus and it's got the stunting symptoms. In the back, about three feet away, you've got a ginger that is its neighbor and it has not been infected. Um, so in terms of prevention, there's almost you can see that it doesn't matter what you do, sometimes it could be right next to it and you're not going to get the infection. But for growers of cut flowers, you want to make sure that you're starting clean and you're inspecting your plant material for symptoms before you're using. If you're finding any plant material that is infected, you want to remove it. For cultural, you want to make sure that you're maintaining healthy plants. We discussed this in uh, another talk. So ginger loves water. Ginger can be fertilized and it's a heavy feeder in, as long as it's not uh, infected. But as soon as these plants are showing these viral and fungal symptoms, excess water and excess fertilizer are exacerbators of the issue. So high nitrogen will encourage uh, aphid and mealybug uh, populations and it can promote uh, fungal uh, growth. So CTAR recommends a 1 to 1 to 1 or 315 NPK fertilizer. Um, now that's pretty low for, uh, for a cut flower grower. And it, it, if you're infected, you still want to try to do something around there. So only anecdotally have we seen success in fungicide trials. So we've got a grower in Kahuku, and this is his field in that picture, he has the virus, he has what we assume is the fungicide, or fungal pathogens. He successfully controls it using Manzate. He's used a few other uh, chemicals, some of them not so labeled for uh, cut flower production, and the only one he's had success with is, is Manzate. So we're looking at Manzate as well as a number of other fungicides uh, for chemical treatments, including heritage, diphane, and copper sulfate. In terms of insecticides, uh, we're not recommending broad spectrum insecticides for control of these aphids or mealybugs. It's uh, a non-persistent virus, so these aphids can infect the plant uh, before you even know you have an aphid infestation, and then they can not host uh, the virus anymore by the time you find them. So if you're spraying for aphids uh, with a broad spectrum, spectrum insecticide, you might be eliminating uh, predatory insect populations. So if you find aphids using a good scouting program, you would want to spray with horticultural oil or insecticidal soaps. And if you have populations that are too high, then you might want to consider broad spectrum insecticides. And if you have infected plants, you want to destroy them and replace them. For these folks that are in Kahalu, the farms that are really badly infected, they would have to basically start over. Um, but if in your fields, you've got one or two plants that are showing symptoms, you want to remove them, make sure that you don't have aphid populations or mealybug populations, and replace those plants with another, um, with another clean ginger stock. And there are some alternative species that we're not seeing the disease symptoms on. Uh, so some of them are cultivars and some of them are straight other species. So this was kind of for the landscape industry, but it might also be 
helpful for cut flower growers because in the epicenter of where the problem was, we were seeing other Alpinia purpurata growing that did not exhibit any symptoms. And that was uh, Jungle King and Raspberry. In fact, this was at Ho Malahia. This is a stand of the Raspberry, uh, Alpinia purpurata. While other red flower and ginger were showing all symptoms and they all had declined, these plants are perfectly healthy. So that's a testament to the genetics behind uh, virus and fungal resistance. And of course, we've got Eileen McDonald and Tahitian also not showing symptoms on Oahu. Here's just a few other. These are at Lion Arboretum. So in conclusion, we've got four viruses causing symptoms. Co-infections also occur between the viruses. Fungal pathogens are the most likely uh, cause of the quick decline in the ginger stands. We're determining management strategies and trying to survey for a statewide understanding of where the disease is at. So Robert did a little bit over on Big Island. I think I can come in and do a little bit more of surveying for growers. We need to work on Kauai and Maui Islands as well. I just want to talk about one other thing because it might be helpful for growers over here. Um, on Oahu Island, Podocarpus blight is an issue that HDOA brought up with me, and it's something that I'm working with Manco at HDOA on. So this is not grant money. This is just something that the landscaping industry was worried about. And Eric asked me to keep you guys updated because Podocarpus is, is potentially a good cut flower, foliage, cut foliage, uh, a plant, and also a lot of growers use Podocarpus as uh, windrows or uh, uh, windbreaks. So we found three pathogens on this podocarpus that are causing the, the blight, and it's Alternaria, Pestilosia, and Coletta trichum. And we've done pathogenicity testing on them, as well as some studies on uh, what's causing them to germinate under certain conditions. So really healthy podocarpus aren't getting the blight. Uh, podocarpus mainly close to the ocean. So in landscaped areas that have a lot of salt damage, we're seeing a lot of this infection. And we've also noticed through a little bit of experimentation that sun damage, the salt damage, and mechanical wounding is causing the germination to occur of these plant, of these uh, pathogens. And also germination almost always was only occurring when in, in in vitro experiments when we were using plant exudates. So we were grinding up leaves and putting them into the media. And the, germina the germination would not occur unless those exudates were there, which is also an indicator that the plants are needing to be damaged in order for germination to occur. So we're at the point where we're going to also do fungal uh, fungicide trials mm -hmm. on this podocarpus. Yeah. So that's all I have. Um, Six months in, I need to do statewide surveys. Uh, if you are a grower, you want to contact me, uh, I would love to come sample your plants. And of course, take questions. Thank you. So, um, so you, you mentioned that you, you don't see the ginger virus here, but you feel it may be spread to the neighbor islands now? That's, that's from John Hu. Him and I were talking about it, and he says that viral symptoms have, or these viruses are most likely on other islands because they're very common on Canna. Um, now, BBRMV has not necessarily been a problem for bananas in Hawaii, but it's probably on bananas. And that was, that was John Hu's recommendation was, I don't know if we should work on a quarantine program. It might not be helpful because the problem, the viruses are, are most likely already there. Our experience with any kind of quarantine is it, it takes a long time to do. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. Unless it's uh, something really, really uh, highly, highly important you know, yeah. to the community. So, for the growers here, um, is there, are you going to have something um, published? Yeah. That so once once we have something useful uh, that's going to say, okay, this is an actual control that we know works for this. 
uh, we're going to have it published. Yeah, and that's part of the grant is, is developing the best management practices. Um, so first things first is we need to figure out if mealybug is the vector of the CAYMV and what the other vectors are of the other viruses. Um, and then working on control for them. And so that's mainly going to be using other research because we're not going to be able, with the money that we have, unless we get more money, develop a large uh, control experiment mm -hmm. because we just don't have that much money. We're just uh, kind of finishing up uh, a, a uh, chemical test um, with Dr. Tom Chuck. Mm -hmm. And so he had some experience spraying uh, ginger in heliconium. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> pretty good results. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I appreciated your talk. And so, I mean, if you need help, you, you have some resource. Yeah. Okay. The current, the current uh, work that uh, Dr. Chow. Any reason why they thought this was a new disease? Apparently, this has been around for a long time. Is it weather? Is it culture? Is it? So I think it's just that it got so severe. In these in these areas, because yeah, you see it you see it all through Oahu. Once I started noticing it and, and started sampling for it, I could find it in isolated areas. The problem is is that they let it get to a point that it was completely destroying the stand. So um, the virus was spreading enough through their stand of ginger that uh, it was causing a problem. Okay. And it's something that it, I'm not necessarily sure if it's uh, environmental because. And year after year, they're seeing these symptoms. So it wasn't just one rainy season, and their gingers suffered that year. It's these growers have had. But well, initially, we were told it's a new disease. Yeah, no, that's why. I'm well, there are some, there are some where they, they. I mean, for example, the the um, being common mosaic virus. It had never been seen on ginger before. Yeah. But we don't necessarily know if that's the main virus that is causing the decline symptoms because we have seen that the co-infection between BBRMV and CAYMV are causing something. Yes, sir. Did you guys notice if there was like higher density of many bugs when they passed that top? So that's, we haven't done any surveying in terms of that. I have noticed on plants that are infected have high populations of mealybugs, but I see clean plants with high populations of mealybugs too. On a lot of, for most of these, there's mealybugs all over. But like for the plants that do have um, a lot of different bugs that you see, do they have the virus in the mealy bug? They do, yeah. 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 So there's plants that have mealy bugs that have the virus, that have the mealy bug that don't have the virus, that have the virus that don't have the mealy bug. And there's no, yeah. <laughs> but they could have had it at one point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you guys tried like sequencing um, to see if like, the virus DNA is present? So that's where we're trying, we're at that right now. I want to work with John on collecting mealybugs and, and getting them tested. But just because it's in the mealybugs doesn't necessarily mean that they're vectoring it. It might be that they're sucking up sap and it's in their bodies, but they might not be going in and vectoring it somewhere else. So we have to use them to vector it uh, uh, before we know that they are the, the, the vector. Yeah. Hey, uh, Russell. Yes, sir. So do you know the vector of the bee colony mosaic or the um, banana tree? No. No. I don't know. Yeah. And how about the nematodes? Is anyone about the nematodes? No. No work on nematodes either. So those are those are uh, a pathway to the Thank you, Brian. Okay, thanks, Russell. So that, that, Very that, nice. Uh, do you have another question? Sorry. Another yeah, question. You know, if you have the as you have something that we can actually Send to the membership. Yeah. The membership. If you could get it to uh, Judy, and she'll get it to the board. You wanna any, any kind of any, any kind? No, even even prior to Just publication. Report. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna send Judy. I'm gonna send Judy the PowerPoint. The PowerPoint. Something yeah. short and sweet. And then also, can you get a link up? I'm publishing it into the Hanai, uh, which is the Sustainable Farming Newsletter of Oahu for soap, and I'll forward that to you guys. And that's exact on there is exactly what I've said here. Thank you.